Now, let's say your client wants to set up an irrevocable trust. Remember, irrevocable trust, we can't change them with very limited exceptions. So if they want to set up an irrevocable trust, but they don't want the irrevocable trust to be taxed as a complex trust, like we talked about before. Say, so you know what? I don't. I want to set up an irrevocable trust for my grandkids, for example, but I don't want to pay this in, uh, compressed income tax rate, you know, 37% and only $13,000 of income when I set up this irrevocable trust for my grandkids. What can I do about it? Okay, let's set it up as an intentionally defective grantor trust. So under this strategy, under the code, under certain conditions, under 673 to 679 of the code, we, we can set up an irrevocable trust to be taxable like a grantor trust, okay? So this allows an irrevocable trust to be taxed like a grantor trust for income tax purposes, right? So uh, again, a, a typical example of what we've done with our clients, parents, they wanna set up an irrevocable trust for their grandkids. They wanna invest in, you know, you know, in a portfolio of investments with a financial advisor for the benefit of the grandkids. And, but they want to pay the income taxes on that trust as long as they're alive, as the grandparents are alive. So we use the code provisions to create an intentionally defective trust for income tax purposes so that the grandparents, the trust makers, they can pay the income taxes as long as they're alive, okay? Because they want the grandkids to, you know, to enjoy the money tax-free. So this is one example of how we can design an intentionally defective grantor trust to make things less complicated and let the money grow for the benefit of the grandchildren, right? Now, what, how, the way the trust must be designed, it must have certain language in order for it to qualify as, as an intentionally defective grantor trust. And uh, I have, again, there's, it's in great detail, but just for the sake of this presentation, I listed there uh, on the bottom half of the slide, these are the conditions that the trust must contain. It must have a, a reversionary interest. It must have the power to determine beneficial enjoyment or the corpus or the income, the power to revoke, the power to use trust income, retaining certain administrative powers, et cetera, et cetera. Again, when we design the trust, we insert some of this language to make sure that it qualifies as a grantor trust, okay? So uh, again, but we have to balance that out with asset protection. We have to balance this out with uh, estate planning and, and estate, uh, I'm sorry, estate taxes. So again, we have, to, we have to be very careful when we when we insert this language so it qualifies as, an, as a defective grantor trust, all right? So by building, by giving the grantor these powers, again, the power to revoke, the power to uh, determine who uses a trust income, reversionary interest, it's power of substitution of assets. As long as they have these powers, then it qualifies as a, grantor trust for income tax purposes. Now, some people say, well, why is it called defective? Well, the reason it's called defective is because it's defective, it's intentionally defective for income tax purposes, but not estate and gift tax purposes. So let's use the, the example of grandparents want to set up a, a, a trust fund for their grandkids. Let's say they, they make a, a, a gift of $50,000. Again, ignore gift taxes for this example. Uh, that's another analysis but let's say they give $50,000 to the trust. They want to pay the income taxes on the trust. That $50,000 that they gifted during their lifetime, it will be considered as uh, not part of the grandparents' estate when they pass away for estate tax purposes. So again, it's intentionally defective for income tax purposes because grandparents are paying the income taxes while they're alive. But for estate tax purposes, they removed $50,000 in this example from their taxable estate for federal estate tax purposes. So that's that's why it's called intentionally defective. It's, it's defective for income tax purposes, but not for estate and gift tax purposes, all right? And again, the reason for this, it allows the trust assets to grow income tax free for the benefit of the trust beneficiaries, in this case, the grandkids, all right? And again, it avoids having to file the annual 1041. 